Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John LaPook. I'm the medical correspondent for the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric, and I'm here with Dr. David Servan Schreiber, who is a clinical professor of psychiatry at the University of Pittsburgh. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Oh, welcome. Thanks for having me. And we're going to talk today about his brand new book called Anti Cancer. And to just set it up, Dr. Servan Schreiber is an MD PhD and 16 years ago was doing an experiment on some patients involving an MRI scan. One of the patients didn't show up. He ended up using himself as a guinea pig, as the patient, and lo and behold, accidentally found his brain cancer. That was 16 years ago, was treated with surgery and chemotherapy. He did well for a while, but it came back eight years ago and it was treated again. And eight years ago, he asked himself and asked his doctors, is there anything else that I can be doing to help make my body less fertile for cancer? And what was the response that you got, David? Well, I think I got the response that every patient gets at the end of treatment when they ask, what can I do so it doesn't come back? And doctors usually tell us, well, it doesn't really matter what you do. You know, what we'll do is we'll keep monitoring and we'll do frequent screenings. And, and if, if these things come back, then we'll catch it early. And I have to say, I have, unfortunately, many patients who've been diagnosed with cancer. And it really is the first question, one of the first questions they ask is, what can I do? I want, they want to, you want to have a sense of control, a sense of power. What can I, certainly there's something I can do. What did you find when you, you comb the literature, right? So what I did is, as a scientist, I uh, went to the literature thinking, you know, that can't be true. There has to be things I can do. And in the literature, I found a ton of things about nutrition, about physical exercise, about contaminants you can avoid in the uh, environment, about mind-body approaches and, and managing stress differently. And there was a lot of scientific evidence that this makes an enormous difference in terms of helping your body build up its natural defenses against cancer, which work in, pre in prevention, uh, but also in managing the disease better. Now, one of the things that we've talked about before is, you know, there's a thing called you know, science, you know, um, what, what do we call it? Um, evidence-based. Evidence-based medicine, right? Evidence-based medicine. Um, everything has to be scientific. And, um, and if something isn't exactly proven, then we as physicians feel uncomfortable recommending it. And I have to admit, I feel that way too. If, you know, if I don't know exactly, and of course nothing, it turns out, you know, is perfectly proven in medicine. Medicine is, is an art, really not a science. So, you know, that brings us to specific remedies, specific things that you have found? Maybe we don't know exactly for sure, but what, what if we wait? What happens if we wait to That's know right. exactly? See, well, I think it is scientific. It's just that we don't have the control studies in a thousand patients looking, you know, uh, like we would for a drug if something, if a, a, a nutriment, a, a food, or an exercise regimen works as well as a medication. We don't have these studies. But we have a lot, a lot of good science showing that they, that particular foods affect uh, how cancer cells like grow for example. or don't. Well, we know, for example, that uh, all the vegetables, and particularly some like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, or onions, leeks, and garlic actually kill cancer cells mm -hmm. in the lab. We know that animals that are fed with these uh, particular foods grow cancer tumors much more slowly than those that don't feed on, on, these, pro on these foods. And we know that if you look at epidemiological studies, you look right. at people who eat these foods, they don't have nearly as many cancers, or, or uh, when they have them, they're not as severe as for people who don't eat these foods. So we have reasonably good scientific evidence. We don't have the final proof right. And, and of course, you know, that's the, that's the issue. D it works on, say, in the test tube or on a Petri dish that you, you put some garlic on some cells and they die. But the question, million dollar question is, if you eat the garlic, is it going to kill the cancer inside of you? And we really, we don't know that for sure. But one of the things we talk about is always in medicine, when we come to a point where we're not exactly sure exactly what to do, we ask two questions, right? First is, does it make sense? You know, is there scientific, mm -hmm. is it scientifically logical? And that's what you did in your book called Anti-Cancer, is to try to look at the science. What's true? What do, we, what do we know for sure? What don't we know? What do we have a kind of, we think, in, you know, our intuition says? And I think you do a very good job in that book, I have to say, of, of, of saying you know, what, what we know, what we're not sure of. And you try to do it from a scientific viewpoint. That's mm -hmm. number one. Does it make sense? And you address that in the book. And the second thing is, can it hurt? And what's the downside of of, uh, That's of right. See, the veg the vegetables <laughs> and a lot of exercise. Well, the downside of, of managing stress better, of, of having physical activity uh, 30 minutes, six times a week, and, and changing your diet is that your blood pressure is, is going to be more controlled. Uh, you're not going to have diabetes. Uh, you're not going to have any heart problems. 
uh, and you'll have more energy, will sleep better, and be, have more, be more available and uh, fun to be around for your children. You know, so that's the downside. Right. So when, when you're in a situation like mine, where there's reasonably good science showing that this ought to help, it's not going to cure cancer. Okay? I, I don't have the cure for cancer with garlic and, and jogging. Right. Uh, but and it's going to help. And I think that's important. You said to me earlier, you said I w you were cured by surgery, surgery and chemotherapy. And chemotherapy. But now yeah. on top of that, you'd like to gild the lily a little bit. You'd like to give yourself an insurance policy and do something that's logical, something that makes sense. And that's so uh, he puts all of this in his book called Anti-Cancer. I would be delighted if you read it. I wrote it because I thought this is the book I wish I had had when I was sick. And it's also the book I, I wish I had read so as to never get sick. So uh, nothing gives me more pleasure than putting all that information available for people to use it.